Now, I, in the last video I showed how these common table expressions are only good for the query immediately following it. Uh, if you want your uh, virtual table, meaning your view or your common table expression, to persist a little longer than this, there's two options. There's local and global temporary tables. And roughly, it's, it's the same thing, either one. It's just how wide the scope is, how long the temporary table lasts is the difference. So let's just look at local first. Uh, I'm going to warp this. I'm going to say, uh, well, first of all, we need to we need to create. It's kind of like creating a, a variable in SQL, but instead of um, creating a variable, we're going to we're going to create a temporary table. So I'm going to say create table people in London. Uh, but in order to make it a temporary table, we have to prefix it with the pound sign. And then same thing as always, we just define the schema of the table. So it looks like I have first name and last name. So we'll just say var chart, or wait, let's say first name. Uh, you know what, let's make this a little more interesting. Let's say name, and then um, what other stuff is there in the in the uh, customer, or the employees table? Let's look at select splat from employees. Let's, let's include one or two more columns. Let's get their title of courtesy. Oh, that's good, alright. How about title? Uh, oh, let's just get their title. That's probably more interesting here. Okay, uh, create table. Okay, name. Now, ideally, I use the same data types as what's down here, but I'm just going to guess here. I'm going to say var char. Let's put 100 here, and their title. We'll say var char uh, 50. Why not? Okay, so now I have this temporary table. You can think of it almost like a table variable. I'm going to insert into uh, the people people of London. Uh, I want to insert the results of the select queries. Let me delete all this. Get down here. Remember this query I'm massaging here, it, it, it gives me all the people in London. So I'm creating this temporary table. I'm going to insert the people of London into this table. Run it. F5. Four rows affected. And now I can come down here and say select splat from people in London. And I can do this all day long because it is a local temporary table. Okay, so it it persists, but the persist the persistent only lasts for the uh, duration of this connection. Meaning, or excuse me, it's it's the session, it's the duration of the session. Me meaning, if I if I if I take this and I say select splat from people in London, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to make a new query window. I'm going to paste it right here, and when I run it, it says, "Hey, um, I don't know what people in London is." Uh, that's that's huh? I don't get it. I don't get it. But if I come over here and say, well, let's let's get people in London. Yeah, that exists for the duration of this session. So, in fact, just for fun, let's put a go here. And notice that, oh, whoops, we did the create table. It's saying, hey, it already exists. Let's put the go between it. The session still exists over the bat between batches. But this is considered a different session than this one. Now, just to show you that this, this table does exist, with common table expressions, we create them, use them, and they're gone. But... This temporary table still exists, so I'm going to say, hey, insert again all the people from London. So when I select splat from people in London, we already had four rows from the previous insert. Now we have another four rows from this insert. So if you see Stephen, Michael, Robert, Ann, Stephen, Michael, Robert, Ann. In fact, for fun, I can highlight this, run it a bunch of times. Go here and, oh, lots of data, lots of data. Anyway, so... So this is good that we can use this temporary table within the scope of our query. With common table expressions, you make them, you do a select, and then they disappear. Whereas these local uh, table variables, they, they exist for the context of the session. Now if you need a little wider scope, which if you do need more, if you need a wider, if you do need wider scope, uh, that should cause you pause and think, do I really need to do this? But if you do, if you do, you can widen up the scope a little bit with another pound symbol. So here we go. Pound, pound, pound. I'm putting pound symbols all over the place. And just to make these distinct, I'm going to say this is global. Okay, so now we have a uh, we have a table, a temporary table, which is global, meaning I can access it from other, other uh, sessions. So let's run this. Boom, boom. Okay, we, again, this is a new table. Look, that's why all the data is gone. Is we, we created the table, the global one. We inserted the four records into it, and then I selected from it twice. That's why they're twice. But now, I can go over here to this other query window and say, hey, select flat from pound pound people in London Global. Boom, I can access it there. In fact, 
I can uh, let me let me get another SQL Server Management Studio open. So here is a second instance of SQL Server Management Studio. I can say new query, switch to Northwind, and say hey, people in London Global. So now this this table it's still temporary. It, it'll go away when all the sessions relying on it go away, but uh, it's still there. It's it's so it's almost like it's persisting, but it's not. It, it's still temporary, um, but it's not an object in my database. I'll, I'll go here and Northwind tables, and you don't see any pound pound people in London global tables. So anyway, that's that's temporary tables in a nutshell. Um, again, I I tend to just need to use the local ones, which is good. We want to minimize scope as much as possible.